Hello world, I'm Attila. Today I will talk about the 21 lessons for the 21st century book. And this was a very interesting book about our problems in the present and how we might solve them. And uh, this is the third part of a series and the first part uh, of this book series is the Sapiens book. I've made a video on this and I will link it in the description and it's on the screen now. And the second part is the Homo Deus book and uh, the, I also created the review on it. It's in the description and it's on the screen. So it's a fascinating book. So let's begin. Um, people in the 20th century revolted against the, the power at the top because they sought to translate their vital role in the economy into political power. And uh, now we have the kind of similar problem, but it's not similar because now people feel irrelevant. They feel that uh, machines and AI will do a lot of work in the future and they don't have a place in that future. And it's a dis uh, first a disclaimer. These are not my political views and I don't want to share my political views. I will um, just convey the messages that the book said. So in two 2016, the Trump and the Brexit election was a result of people who still enjoyed political power, but who feared that they were losing their economic worth. Um, and it's true that the AI will replace a lot of jobs, but we can't block it from happening because uh, just driverless self-driving cars would uh, save 1 million people each and every year because that's the current uh, death mm, happening from car injuries and uh, AIs will also replace music and art if they if these fields are about uh, ma manipulating human emotions and I think they are so soon we will see very interesting AI artists and uh, DJs and the infotech and biotech revolution will be much bigger in its impact than the industrial revolution. And we can't afford to make mistakes like we did during the age of the industrial revolution. Um, the first world war was, an, was a mistake like this. And uh, in order to like um, give people money and so they might not starve to death because they don't have jobs. We have two options. First, we provide people with universal basic income, which is the capitalist paradise. And our second option is we provide them with universal basic services, which is the communist paradise. I'm more of a capitalist, but that doesn't matter. But what matters is this basic means that um, Americans will probably agree that uh, we have to pay universal basic income or, uh, to American people, but uh, they won't agree to paying this money to all the citizens of the world, because that will mean that they will have less money personally that they get. And the problem is that many of these tech giants uh, are placed in the US, in the Silicon Valley, and uh, they are global in nature. So they make money all throughout the world, but they are only taxed in the US and they will only provide money to the US, to the citizens of the US, USA. So countries in other parts of the world will have problem if they don't have, uh, if they don't have these tech giants who will create jobs for them not jobs who will uh, create money for them. And the uh, people in the US, they feel lucky because they don't have to work and they get free money. That's like a dream. But it's not so much good because they also lose control over their own lives. Um, so they are at the mercy of the, of the government. They can cut their... Uh, pay whenever they would like to. And uh, when we 
we rely on our hearts all the time to make decisions. So we are um, we are based on our emotions. And then someone hacks this heart inside us. The whole democratic politics will turn into a puppet show. And the AI will also have tremendous benefits. So we might be able to insert these biometric sensors into our body and the AI will be able to analyze this massive amount of data and uh, say that like uh, you are smoking and at each day the AI would report how much uh, new cancer cells were created in your body and that would uh, if they hear that like uh, you had seven more cancer cells because you smoked one more day that would make most people stop smoking even then if someone don't stop smoking the ai would send these diagnostics to their mom their manager their insurance agency and uh, that would certainly make you stop or another possibility is that we might instruct our health algorithm to to send in like small nanobots into our body and repair these uh, cancer cells. And uh, it will be probably just a notification on our phone that uh, the AI again cured the seven cancer cells in your body. And that's like a notification you get every day when you woke up. It's fascinating. And the decision making is becoming not a human thing, but a job for algorithms today. And this trend will continue to continue in the future. We consider the truth, the top, top ranking page or the top ranking result on a Google search. And we trust Google map with uh, like taking us to our destination. And we trust Netflix to recommend us movies but for example netflix can influence our lives based on the movies it recommends us if they for example uh, recommend us an ai movie about an ai that destroyed the world then we will have like a not so positive look on the ai but if it uh, recommends us a movie where uh, ai solves many of our challenges and it's create like a massive abundance and a lot of money and uh, general uh, good living standards for the whole popul population, then we will have a good uh, like look at the AI. And there is also, if we have a philosophical self-driving car, a self-driving car would be able to make decisions at every moment. And uh, at some point or time, it will have to make a decision whether it wants to sacrifice the lives of the owner, of, or not the owner, but the passenger inside the car, or it might sacrifice the, sacrifice the passenger on the street. And it's quite, it's frightening to think about that when you buy a new car, you might have an option where you want to select whether in a case of an accident that it can't uh, that it can't uh, like quit do you want to sacrifice your own lives or the lives of the family in another car or like the passenger on the street of course lawmakers can also create a law out of this but uh, we, we, I'm not sure whether we want to provide these important decisions on the law. So the problem is that um, self-driving cars will be much safer than us. But uh, like we just, um, we don't know what we are doing in every second. So we can't uh, make uh, conscious decisions like this. While self-driving cars will be able to do this. And in the future, we will have also a danger of digital dis dictatorship. Uh, a digital dictator might create killing machines that would be very good at killing with AI and stuff like this. But another possibly even more frightening scenario 
is a digital surveillance system like the one that is being built in China at the moment. Um, then an AI would be able to create a credit score for each and every individual and uh, you will you would have a freedom based on that credit score. And um, in the late 20th century, Democrats perform, democrat, uh, democratic uh, countries perform better than uh, dictatorship countries because democrat, uh, democracies were, a, were better at data processing because it was very inefficient to make decisions in one place at the hand of a dictator. But uh, this will pr possibly change with AI because AI makes it possible to process enormous amounts of information easily and it works better with the more data you have. And uh, we will probably still have figureheads in the government, but uh, even figureheads in the government will only choose between options presented to them by an AI. So these options will uh, reflect the opinions of the AI. There is no reason to assume that the artificial intelligence will gain consciousness because intelligence and consciousness, they are different things. Uh, we tend to cons confuse them because uh, with humans, consciousness and intelligence uh, goes hand in hand. So mammals and uh, us in general, we solve most problems by feeling things, while uh, intelligence is the ability to solve problems and consciousness is the ability to feel things such as pain, joy, love and anger. So AI will have to recognize these biological patterns, these uh, anger, uh, love, uh, joy, but it can do so, can recognize them without consciousness. And uh, we are creating tame humans who just uh, process enormous amount of data and uh, feed this data into AI. And we are becoming like this very efficient chips in a huge data processing mechanism. So in this process to this uh, AI revolution, we don't want to lose our humanity. We don't want to just become a part of a machine. We want to like keep our originality. So we should spend money on, expl on exploring the human mind instead of developing new AIs. And um, with biotechnology and AI, rich people who have a lot of money will be able to create superhuman abilities for themselves. And uh, there will be a small number of superhumans against the rest of the world who are poor and they don't have these superhuman abilities. So the ones who have data will, will have even more power in the future. And it's quite frightening that uh, like there was racism and the Nazis were, were there because they thought that they were like superior to other species and to other uh, races. But if the rich people would actually be superior in our biological abilities, then it will be very frightening future. And um, polarization is also becoming a major issue with uh, social media. And um, it said that humans can get to know each other well online. But if a tool is developed inside fa Facebook, which will, um, which will make uh, offline conversations easier or which will uh, motivate people to con converse offline, will Facebook indoors this, uh, will Facebook support this uh, tool or will they suppress it? So we, I think the likely scenario is that uh, Facebook and other companies will, uh, will merge offline and online activities into this a AR, um, into this AR reality. And uh, 
we will probably miss the good old days when online and offline experience was separable. So you were be able you were able to like just uh, keep uh, left leave your phone at home and just go into the mountains and uh, be alone for a while. And uh, animal sp species never merged together, while humans always. So there was mo one monkey, one types of monkey in the beginning, and then the species like uh, separated from each other. But uh, humans, these different races, races with this globalization, we merge with one another, and we will have great global problems in the next century, and. Uh, we will have to come together and uh, organize these efforts together. And it's also quite fascinating to think about, for example, an Oli the Olympics. Like, um, it's a massive global effort. And it's, it represents that the humans can work together for a common goal. And um, nuclear war, ecological collapse, the global warming, for example, and technological disruption the threat of an AI, are the three threats that uh, threaten our civilization. These are all global threats in nature, so we have to come together to solve them. And currently, nationalism and religions divide our world. And uh, when we enter an, into an immigration uh, debate, we fundamentally in probably enter into it that uh, with not the assumption that all cultures are inherently equal, but we rather think that uh, some cultures might well be superior to others, possibly our own cultures. And uh, Europe currently tries to find a middle path that would enable uh, it to keep its gates open to strangers without being destabilized by people who don't share its values. So it is talking about like the immigrants from, uh, from the Middle West coming to Germany and to uh, other countries and uh, to like open our gates to these immigrants and to welcome them, we must cool down the hysteria regarding terrorism. So terrorists, they, they are very good at controlling minds, so they can't do anything without fear. They are just very little, they are just a few couple of hundred people and they are trying to destroy a whole country like with tens of millions of people with hundreds of millions of people. So they are so weak that they cannot wage a war. So they opt instead to produce a theatrical spectacle that will hopefully provoke the enemy and cause him to overreact. So with fear we are overreacting them. And the thing is that uh, we don't have a lot of violence. Like uh, killing 100 people in the medieval times that would be like nothing, nobody would ever talk about it. But now, because we don't have a lot of violence, a small coin in a big empty jar makes a lot of noise. So even these very small terrorist attacks, they are very violent and they are frightening. But we shouldn't be frightened of them, because they, con they live with fear. And the uh, like, lucky thing is that uh, we do they don't have nuclear or biological weapons yet, so we don't have to worry. Our ancestors in the 2050 will probably think that like, how could they even think that they were dangerous? They didn't even have nuclear weapons and biological, I don't know what. So nobody gains anything from war um, currently, so we live in a peaceful times. Um, Russia is weak. They don't have technical, technological or biological innovation. They just pay a couple of hackers to keep Putin in power. And uh, the problem is of Russia is also a lack, a lack of universal ideology. 
during the Cold War, the USSR relied on the global appeal of communism as much as on the global reach of the Red Army. So this overarching ideology is also very important. And, uh, so, like Caesar and uh, Genghis Khan used to be, like they used to invade a foreign country like very fast. They didn't fear of uh, nobody. But uh, present day nationalist leader, leaders such as Erdogan, they talk loud but are very careful about actually launching war. Because uh, in the great age of conquerors, warfare war was a low damage, high profit affair. So you could easily invade another country, you might have a couple of deaths in your army, but you had a new, camp, a new, a new army and a new country. While now, nuclear weapons and uh, cyber warfare, by contrast, are high damage, low profit technologies. You could uh, use such tools to destroy entire countries, but not to build profitable empires. So, waging war is not profitable for everyone, to anyone. And uh, many religions praise humility, but uh, then imagine themselves to be the most important thing in the universe. So, I'm not religious and I don't want to offend anyone. But, um, and like religion can be very good because like and their impact depend on the type of feelings and behaviors they inspire if visiting a temple makes people experience peace and harmony that's wonderful but uh, if a particular temple causes violence and conflicts then uh, what do we need it for then you can we can destroy it and uh, every religion should admit its own mistakes and be aware of its imperfections. Uh, religion, relig religious leaders speak freely about uh, eternity, purity, redemption, as if by enacting some law, building some temple or conquering some piece of territory, they could save the entire world in one grand gesture. Um, and then it said that the great power inevitably distor distorts the truth. So if you have power, the people that surround you will uh, you will have an extremely distorted vision of the world because the ones that around you they will tell you things that you want to hear. But if you know this and you venture to the margins. You will, uh, and you will go to the real world and you will talk to real people, you will get data yourself. You will waste too much time, too much time of your precious time and you will, won't be able to make quick decisions. So truth and power can only travel together so far. Sooner or later you will have to separate these. If you want power, at some point you will have to spread fiction. If you want to know the truth about the world, at some point you will have to renounce power. For example, admit the source of your power and that people won't like um, you because of that. And um, if you want reliable information in the real world, you must pay good money for it. Because if you get your news for free, you might well be the product. And another advice, it said that you shouldn't rely on adults too much as a child, because people after the age of 50, they don't change very much. They don't want to understand the world. They say, they think that, that they have worked enough throughout their lives. Like adults used to be a safe bet, like, uh, Listening to them used to be a good investment because they did have a lot of experience. But uh, now the world is changing every few years. And, uh, as bio biotechnology and machine learning improves, it will become easier to manipulate 
people's deepest emotions and desires. And it will be become more dangerous than ever to just follow your heart. And uh, Amazon, the algorithms of Amazon and uh, the government or some big tech company will take care of you. So in the future, you don't even have to think. You will just do what the algorithms tell you to do. But if you don't like this world view, then uh, if you want to control your own future, you have to outrun the algorithms and uh, get to know yourself before they do. And uh, you must leave all your illusions behind about the world. So you must get to know yourself fast. Once personal identities and entire social systems are built on top of a story, it becomes in unthinkable to doubt it, not because of the evidence supporting it, but because it, its collapse will trigger a personal and social capitalism. So, for example, Christianity. It's so unlikely that uh, there would be a life form that would just come into the universe and create everything magically. But uh, because our entire world of worldview, uh, whole governments build on this and the whole social structures, it's like very, very difficult to break this and it's like uh, impossible. And um, sacrifice not only strengthens your faith in the story, but uh, often substitutes it for all your other obligations towards it. So, for example, let's take a Christian who, like, um, they don't actually live by the 10 laws of Christianity or like, uh, because they think that uh, if they provide just, uh, if they donate just a little bit of money every year to building a temple, that will be enough for the God. So in the quest, the human quest for meaning all too often ends with a succession of sacrifices. So they think that because they sacrifice, they don't have to do anything else. And uh, we should realize that we don't control our desires and uh, even we don't even control our reactions to these desires. So if you really want to understand yourself, you should not identify with your Facebook account or with the inner story of, of the self that you created. You should um, observe the actual flow and of the body and your mind. And you will see thoughts, emotions and desires appear and disappear without much re reason and without any comment from you just as different winds blow from this or that direction and mess up your hair. So that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But like our thoughts and desires, they are not controlled by us. These are just random things inside an animal. And uh, when people ask, who am I? They expect, they and expected to be told a story. So we think that we are a story. And the first thing that you know about yourself is that you are not a story. You are just a random organ organism. So if you want to get to know yourself to this on this task to outrun the algorithms, to get to know yourself first before them, it's incredibly difficult. But you should meditate regularly observe the truth inside yourself and uh, don't try to distort it because we distorting the truth is too too easy so we had better understand our minds before the algorithms make our, make our minds up for us so before they create minds for us so I found this book fascinating, it's very deep topics and um, I will share many of the quotes that I read here on my Twitter account 
So you should follow me there. I will put it on the screen. You should also subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow my podcast. I create videos every day and I read one book every day, share the things that I learned from that book. So if you want to learn more, please subscribe and uh, check out the description. So thank you for coming in. Bye bye.